let's move on to the next part of the tutorial, engine start and preparing to take off. First, let's set the aircraft systems to cold and dark state. There's a settings menu accessed by the setup button on the front part of the glare shield on the right side. In the menu, there are two states available, ready to taxi and cold and dark. Ready to taxi can be used for an automatic start and preparation of all systems for takeoff. Since we'll try a manual startup, we choose cold and dark and press the apply button. We wait for the engine RPM to drop and all systems to shut down. For procedural convenience, we've prepared checklists taken from the official pilot manual. As you can see, they're very detailed with numerous steps. Clicking on a cue automatically highlights the corresponding switch. We won't go through all the checks, just proceed directly to the quick start procedure. Ensure that the electricals are off and the throttle levers are in the cutoff position. There are two ways to start the engines on the ground, one is from the ground starter unit, and the other is from a special starting cartridge, a pyrotechnic device inserted before starting. The checklist describes starting from the cartridge because it's available anywhere, while starting from the ground starter unit is only possible on the ramp. Go to the setup menu and install the cartridge. The master starter switch has three positions, off position, then pneumatic start from the ground starter unit or from already running engine and cartridge start position. We choose the cartridge. We'll be starting from battery power. Starting from the cartridge is only available on the left engine, and its ignition requires moving the left engine throttle lever to idle position. Externally, we can see the left engine starting and the hydraulic system building pressure. Monitor the engine instruments. Observe the RPM, combustion chamber temperature, and fuel flow of the left engine. When the engine reaches 50% of maximal RPM, the ignition switch automatically turns off. The left engine's generator switch to run position. Observe the gyroscopes and other systems connected to the main power bus starting up. Check the oil pressure. Time to turn on external lights. Verify the indicator functions. They should illuminate for 5 seconds after the test button is pressed. Now, we're ready to start the right engine, and we'll start it from the already running left one. Set bleed air switches to auto. The starter switch to PNEU position. For the bleed air to build up the necessary pressure for the start, the left engine must be set to 70 to 80% nominal power. Observe the right turbine spinning up. To ignite, move the right throttle lever to idle position. Monitor the right engine start up on the instruments. Check the oil and hydraulic pressure in the right system. After the startup, the starter switch should automatically snap to the OFF position. Start the right engine's generator. The electrical system status indicator should show normal. Check the backup generator.
turn on the cabin pressurization and conditioning system. Set the headlight switch to taxi. Turn on anti-skid. Set autopilot pitch, roll, and yaw channels to the damper position. Configure flaps and slats to the 10 degree position. Check the flaps and slats positions on the indicator. Move the autopilot coupler knob to NAV position. Set the transition altitude on the altitude preselector. The longer you hold the button, the faster the parameters change. Turn on the terrain following radar system. It's not functional in the current version, but we'll try to release it in the upcoming updates. The same goes for the RHAW defense radar and the attack radar. Set their switches to on. Turn on the inertial navigation computer, which is used in various navigation and weapon aiming systems. Activate the avionics, the combined navigation communication and ADF radio, the TACAN, tactical radio navigation system, and the instrumental landing system. Before takeoff, check the loadout and takeoff weight. In the payload menu next to the setup button, you can modify the load. For example, you can add external tanks. Note that the inner two pylons are swiveling and always synchronized with the wing's position and aligned with the airflow. The outermost external pylons are fixed at a 26 degree wing position. Therefore, moving the wing beyond 26 degrees with external pylons attached is prohibited. In this section, you can see the total fuel and loadout mass. Front tanks, rear tanks, additional weapon bay tanks, internal wings tanks, and external droppable tanks. With a full load, the aircraft mass can significantly exceed the maximal allowed takeoff weight. When the current mass exceeds the norm, the corresponding line is highlighted in red. For this flight, we'll remove the external tanks on the fixed pylons and deactivate the pylons themselves. Now the takeoff weight is within the limits. Refuel the wing tanks by pressing the refuel button. In the bomb bay section, two additional tanks can be located, but we don't need them for this flight. Now we're almost ready to begin taxiing to the takeoff position. Engage the LCOS system. Activate the nose wheel steering, the green NWS indicator lights up. We also need to set the horizontal stabilizer to the takeoff position. To do this, press the TO button on the front panel. Adjusting the stabilizer takes about 3 to 5 seconds, after which the green indicator above the button should light up. Double check to ensure everything is in its place. We are all set for takeoff, let's taxi to the runway.